Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to all of you, my dear students. How are you doing today? Fine. That's really good. I believe all of you everywhere are doing well and I wish you a very good day. And a very warm welcome to lecture number five of Report Writing Skills. This lecture is coming right after we have discussed uh, the introduction to report and overall structure each and every section alongside all the examples of each section we looked into it we analyzed it and now we know how each and every section is supposed to be structured and moving onwards what kind of planning is needed on first-hand basis afterwards you can just actually go through the actual writing process so we looked into each and every component and if I take you towards those things talking about the flashback of the previous lecture so we had a good discussion on the discussion section of the report the way it is supposed to be structured and what kind of planning is needed what is supposed to be covered and I talked about the manner in which you know you go through the different citation if you have to cite how do you basically go through it if you need to give some sort of reference what is the basic procedure of giving a reference we talked about you know the parenthetical citation talked about footnotes and notes so there are different means and you can go through each and every one of them you can go into the details as well and I gave you the reference of Microsoft Word as well that it's a good tool it will help you in each and every moment of your report writing process moving ahead the manner in which you are expected to write your findings your key findings then on the basis of which you come towards your conclusion and what is basically needed when you have to basically provide your own recommendations so it is basically uh, based on the basic purpose and the objective of your report writing so accordingly you structure your recommendation section and if there's uh, some sort of detail which if kept apart or at the end of the whole report may not affect the overall meaning will be placed within the appendices or the appendix section so in this way we looked into the structure of report and there are few other things uh, which can be discussed here while we had this slide visible in front of you all uh, because I would like to mention it it's quite important and it will be quite helpful especially when you will be going through uh, the process of report writing basically that part of report writing in which you will be documenting the other sources so my point here is that and the reason why I've picked it as I have a little bit good space that you can see on my side that I have the white space that will be a little bit yellow when I'll be highlighting things but the point here is for example if uh, you have to give a reference of some sort of work which has been written by two authors so of course that requires that you give a reference of both the authors meaning you are going to mention their surnames now the manner in which you basically cite their names or give their reference are divided into two categories within the text if you do it why like according to the name of two authors are uh, a one author is a one author is B it just for simplification you can also say that be it one author Ahmed the other is Ali or one author Dilawar <laughs> the other author is Bilawal and so on you can think of any name but for simplification what I'm saying is that one author is A and the other is B so if you are giving reference at the beginning of the statement before the actual quote by those two author comes then you're going to say according to A and B and then the quote so when you are writing this A and B their mode would basically be uh, A and then you're going to basically write it as and then B that's the way you do it A uh, this line got a little long which is why it took a little bit more space but you got the idea and then according to A and B focus on the manner in which I've written this and however things would be a little different if you are uh, mentioning the name of these authors within parenthesis and would you like to tell me where is the place where you simply write the name of the author within parenthesis oh yes very right very good clapping for this person who has given the right answer 
all of you. Just give him a big round of applause. He's very right. The point is that you simply do it in such a sequence that once the quote is complete, then you provide that reference. So in that case, uh, if this is your quote, and then you write the name the, uh, within the parenthesis, let's say I'm writing A, and this is the thing to learn over here. This is this sign that is known as the ampersand. Let me draw it again for you. This is the sign, and that's how it will come, A and B, comma, the year, the year would come and then you're going to basically close your parenthesis. So if you are giving the reference of those authors at the end of the quote, then you're going within the parenthesis, of course, then you're going to use ampersand instead of writing A and D. This sign is going to play the part. However, within the statement, if you are mentioning their name, then A and D will be written between the two authors. And that's how you basically develop the reference. Another thing to mention is that uh, not every work is like written by just one author or two author. It could be a detailed study, which is like a contribution of more than even two authors. So in that case, basically, for example, if I, we had the example of two authors, that's how we basically do it. And you're going to give their reference in the same way, uh, wherever you are mentioning them within your work. However, if there are more than two authors, meaning if there are three authors or four authors or five authors. So I am between the figure of three and five. Well, in that case, what you have to do is that for the very first time, if you're giving their reference, uh, A, author A, B, C, D, and E. So if you're giving their reference at the very first place, their very first reference within your work, in that case, you're going to mention uh, each and every one of their surnames. They all will come and together it will form a mm, reference, a citation. However, the next time within your same work, ref give, uh, referring to the same five authors and their work, whenever you will do the same thing, then you only have to do is, quick tip for you, A meaning name of just uh, the first author and afterwards ET and a l small e small t small a and l you have probably seen it as well within an italics and then there is a small dot of it this expression basically uh, is for saying and others so you are saying author a and others and that's how you basically conclude it all that whenever you have to give reference the second reference of a work which has been written by almost three to five authors for the very first time, you mention all of their names. But for the next time and onwards, you're going to mention only the first author. And right afterwards, you're going to say at all, meaning uh, A and others. However, things will become a little bit different once again if we talk about, let's say, six authors. Now we have crossed that scale of five authors and now we have exceeded it, meaning we're talking about six and more. Well, in that case, you're always going to mention A and then the same way at all. So A, B, C, D, E, F, six authors. In that case, you'll be mentioning one and afterwards you're going to write at all, meaning A and others, meaning there are probably more than five, which is why the names haven't been mentioned. But the complete reference, of course, will simply or directly take you towards the actual work within which all the names would be mentioned and in this way you would be able to simply find the actual work and who are the actual authors are. So that's how you basically uh, are able to uh, cite and to acknowledge and to document each and every source which is expected from you to do to acknowledge them on one hand, making your own work authentic, credible and reliable on the other hand and that's how it is expected from you to do professional writing. So are we clear at this step? Yes boys and girls, I don't hear a yes. Yes, give me a big yes.
Now that's more like it. This was something that I needed and I got it from you. I'm quite satisfied. Now whenever you'll be uh, simply writing, you'll be going through the actual writing process. You're going to remember these minor tips which are going to make a difference, a good impression when you do the actual writing. So make it count. That's where I did all the practicing and all the drawing that you can see on the slide as well. So remember all the points that we had just discussed. Another quick tip because that is also quite important as well. For example, there are uh, two authors, two authors with the same name. For example, uh, two authors have the same surname like Ahmed. Even I have the Ahmed, which is why when I can give a reference to my mother, so, uh, sorry, my brother. So uh, we both have the same surname, being the sons of the same father, of course. He had this Ahmed as well, so we have Ahmed as well. So, uh, our initial name, of course, is the difference. The first name is different, he being Nayab Ahmed, and I am Anmol Ahmed. So, if it's a combined work of we two brothers, and we have to, or someone has to give a reference of both of us, so it'll cause a little bit of confusion if uh, we are being referred together because Ahmed and Ahmed. But to simply differentiate the two, what you can do is that you're going to use our first name initial, meaning for me, you can simply say A Ahmed, and for him, N Ahmed. So in that way, you basically are able to differentiate and give a reference of both of us together. Although we haven't written something together, to be quite honest and frankly speaking, but this is just for you to uh, just have an idea how you basically cite or give reference of two persons or two individuals or two researchers who have by coincidence or by naturally uh, same surname so that's how you're able to differentiate between the two another situation where a single author author a uh, has written multiple works uh, within a single year meaning let's say if that year is 2000 author name is a a has written um, three works within the year 2000 and now if you have to give a reference of each and every work that can cause a little bit of problem because you're simply going to say author name year of publication so how would we be able to simply differentiate between all of them so there is a quick tip for you once again that if you have to give a reference of like those works you're going to use the small alphabets the small letters small a small b small c to make a difference between those two three works who have been written uh, together or i would say within the same year basically so two three publication in the same year of the same author single author if needs to be cited then you basically use alongside uh, like i'm making a bracket 2000 this is the year and I'm giving a reference of one work as writing a alongside this 2000 if I have to give a reference to the second work so I'm going to write alongside 2000 B so this is the way I'm giving reference to the second work and in the same way I can write 2000 and C which is going to do the thing for you so this is uh, the basic point that I wanted to mention here Although I have like used the whole space here, but most of the points have been made clear as well. That's why I said that I want to use this slide and this space which I have in this point because afterwards we're going to be talking about some new points, some new things that we'll be discussing. But over here I'm pretty much satisfied I've covered and I've told you most of the things which are very much important when it comes to uh, documenting the sources because you always are wondering how to give a reference uh, what are those things which are written like uh, on every book there are references within parentheses name of like people alongside some years so this is what they are doing basically they're also documenting making it more authentic acknowledging the sources this is what they do and that's what professional writers do and this is something which I expect from you to do and which you will be doing as well once you enter the professional life so I wish you all the best for it as well Okay, that done, 
queue for you you know what you have to do because like I'm about to take a stop with what we'll be covering within our today's actual session but you got all the tips that you need to, for writing your own report wish you all the best and let's just take a start with uh, what we have to talk about within our today's lecture so we'll be discussing about the different types of reports we'll be looking into them of course this is like or take it as uh, an overview because still I would say there are many other types of report so but we'll be giving you a good picture of what are the different categories and how you are able to differentiate between them talking about the major categories so these are the ones I hope you can find some uh, yeah the graphical representation is there for you this is one category the formal category and if I just circle the other one the informal category we're not saying as though this informal is the one which is also quite informal in its structure and which is why it's informal within the language that is totally not the case you can consider it to be a name written on the basis of the length of these two reports because formal is generally considered to be a little bit long a little bit detailed more structured with some more sections whereas informal is quite target oriented more specific have everything or even I could say the numerical data or even the statistics everything is there and in a very short form very concise form which is why they are differentiated within the two categories and that's why uh, they have been given these two names but that doesn't mean that it's totally informal it is also professional and this one is also professional the previous one a good talk over these two would uh, clarify your idea so let us just begin and see what these are what are their characteristics okay starting from the informal report so even if I ask you what is an informal report now you would be able to tell me as well once we discuss these points as well so informal report more focus or emphasis on the information so quite short quite quite point blank quite clear and the purpose one purpose is of course the transfer of inf information quite concrete information quite short information something is required and you simply state it or I would say describe it because do you remember the difference that I told you between mm, description and explanation so that is the point that you need to keep in mind as well it's the kind of report in which it is expected from you to provide or focus more on the description rather than the explanation because if it's needed it will be asked as well but the focus in journal and in trend in following the tradition is focus on the descriptive information rather than going for the detail it can also be uh, more or less related with the analysis if it has been asked so it also does the analysis part as well uh, statistical analysis and numerical analysis of the data which has been provided within numerical form so uh, if the numbers have been provided to you the quantitative data has been provided to you you can look into it to analyze what are the things which are most important and you can find the answer that you are looking for recommendation is also there if it is required if it is very much needed so it also becomes an important part of the informal report as well if it's needed that's the point that it's it's all dependent on the basic thing and that is uh, the purpose or you can say the aim the objective of writing the report so that counts basically then of course the same point which I mentioned the length defines it to be more informal compared to the formal part because formal is quite detailed and I'll be discussing it you'll get the idea and even I would say that it will be your own experience as well to write uh, a formal report ah, yes a formal report at your own time as well I was just wondering whether I may not be mis mixing up the two things but I'm quite right you basically have to go for the formal report because it's detailed and it's expected from you to come up with some good relevant detail when you will be submitting your own report as well so over here what counts is short form short length more formality to the point facts and figures shared with students deals with everyday problems and issues as you're going to uh, see within the upcoming slides as well the kind of categories which fall within the informal category of report so they are more or less related with the everyday problems and issues that we face and we try to you know 
find out the solutions of all those problems. So this is something that we are doing and this is something which is expected to be done by writing an informal report. Moving ahead, usually written for the kind of readership with, uh, yes, usually written for readership within an organization. This is the way it is supposed to be read. I was just taking it some other way and some other meaning which is I was getting confused that what is it written. Although written by me of course but sometimes you know we can get confused while uh, yeah, delivering a lecture, imagining things as well. So uh, yeah, basically the point here is that this informal report is generally used within an organization because that formal structure is mostly written for the kind of environment within which the information goes from organization to another organization and from that second organization it may also travel to a third organization as well so it will be doing more traveling which is why more detail is expected which is why more statistics are needed but if we talk about the informal report the difference is that uh, the information is kept short the analysis is kept short the recommendation is also quite concrete brief very precise because it's all within an organization so most of the people who are part of your organization are already quite well aware of everything that you are providing to them which is why not that much of detail is needed because they know everything and if you provide details what will it cause boredom distraction and lack of interest dissatisfaction and lack of interest so so many words coming in mind but the point that I want to convey is that it should be kept short because things if short can be the things which can make a difference which is why I keep giving, uh, giving you the cues as well that do not just try to digest the whole of it within a single sitting because that won't be possible for you it can cause a little bit of trouble for you even if I have to watch anything on my smartphone what I do is that I keep uh, keep an eye on everything which I am supposed to do back at my home as well even if I have to watch any kind of video of some program that I have probably missed on TV so even in that case what I do is that I basically focus uh, and keep an eye on all the other activities that I basically have to do and whenever I see like that someone is calling me even my mother is calling me or anyone else needs my help in every way or in some any way so I simply put it aside I go do all the tasks once I'm done once I feel like no one needs my help in anything I am kind of free to do my activities then I just open up the phone and start watching from where I left so the same can be done here as well which is why I'm telling you uh, break matters precision matters conciseness matters concreteness matters facts matters presentation matters everything matters <laughs> So these are the things that's how you can look into the way the informal report is basically written. These are all the characteristics. So okay, we have talked about the information. I believe that everything is clear. Information is needed. Analysis is very much required. What do we mean by recommendation? Of course, all the things that you want uh, your higher authorities to accept or to take action on. Then, of course, short length is needed. It's all about the basic problems and it's kind of written for readership within an organization. So, which is why it is kept short, especially within the kind of environment in which you are working, which demands lots of lots of activities. So, these are uh, the basic, or I would say the basic categories which have been made like part of this lecture or our today's session in which you can see the kind of different categories of an informal report the general categories you may if you simply search on Google you may be able to find many other categories as well but the point of mentioning all these is to give you an idea what are the different types of an informal report keeping in view the same fact which is information analysis recommendation providing a solution keeping a short length within an organization facts and figures shared so you you're going to see once we are talking about uh, these categories of informal reports, you're going to see that alongside the example that it is actually serving that purpose which has been written alongside each category of the report. So if we start from like looking at those components or those categories, 
we have the progress report. Let's hope that, yeah. Then we are going to have another circle. We have the sales activity report, progress report, as it clearly indicates, doesn't require that much. If you need to like have a progress report or you want to see the progress of an ongoing event, so for that, it's basically the report written. Sales activity report, you have the people, the salesmen who are like, who have the product or who all already have the kind of brochures which are needed for different customers or to have their prospective or future customers to make them uh, get the membership of the kind of club or restaurant or any other place that they are basically representing and they are able to make them get the membership or to make them simply like buy something from them so they keep a record of it as well that we were able to sell this 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 amount of or this this uh, quantity of the material which was supposed to be like uh, simply transferred or simply sold to other people so you get the statistics and you share it with your higher authorities and for that you basically write the sales activity report talking about the personal evaluation this reminds me I was, I, mean, I was thinking about it while I was just, you know, preparing myself for our today's lectures. I was wondering, is there, in, is there any, like, example which can be shared with our students to understand the basic idea? One idea of it is, is of course, like, this is the personal evaluation that you do within the professional life. How is it done, basically, is that once you enter within a professional environment, you start working so you either will uh, be on contract you either or you can be like a permanent employee of an organization but the thing to remember is that after a year or after a specific period of time you will go through an assessment that assessment will be done by your higher authorities they will be giving a feedback on your overall performance uh, how was your behavior how was your overall performance with respect to the kind of task given to you? Then what was your like regularity or I would say how punctual you were and what was your what was the rate of your presence? I mean like were you always there when you were needed? Were you there on duty hours or sometimes you were getting late or any other thing or were you on leave? So every factor counts and that is supposed to be there when you are basically talking about a personal evaluation. So it, it's also known within some offices and organization as the ACR, Annual Confidential Report, which is basically prepared or I can say filled up by your higher authorities and on the basis of the score that you get within that ACR, you get your promotion. You simply jump up to another grade or higher grade where you get an increase as well within your basic pay or you get the increment as well, you get the bonus as well, you get rewards as well, you get a good post. So that basically counts. But for that purpose, you have the personal evaluation report. But what was I thinking to share with you, that was known as the report book. When we were young, when we were like within our school years, so. I used to keep and maintain a report book on which the only thing that I could understand was that on the first page of that book there is my childhood picture which I took on which like uh, the person who was taking my picture just told me to smile and have a smiling face. I was wondering how can I do that and he simply said by uh, show me your teeth and take them in a good and a smiling way in a good way so that it looks like that you are happy. It was a like tough task for me that it was like my first ever picture the way you know take that uh, blue background pic which is supposed to be submitted within alongside all the forms for, with which you basically apply for any kind of job but I it was a new experience for a four-year-old or a five-year-old or a six-year-old so it was quite like a different experience for me but the point of mentioning it here is that it was clipped or stapled within my report book and I used to turn over the pages to see what's there written within that report book and I could hardly understand anything except for lines horizontal and vertical lines so and there were some numbers written over there I could see and understand a little bit of names of the subject and I would say yes these are the names of the subject that I'm reading but why so many numbers so but basically that was a report as well 
which I couldn't understand at that time, but my parents were of course maintaining it to simply show it to me when I'll be a grown up. So that's why I'm able to remember it. And maybe that's why I'm able to share that experience with you as well. That my dear students is also like, what is it known as a report book? So that's also a report. And I would say that it's an example of a personal evaluation report as well, which is basically meant for our parents to see the way their child is performing and on the basis of which they need to do whether more hard work or give them the reward, give that child a reward on the basis of the hard work which he or she is doing. But the personal evaluation report is used in such manner and look at the way it, it was being used at such a young age. So this is how it's so important. So much work or so much talk over it even at this time but it will help you once we move ahead to the upcoming slides because most of the things would be clear to you. Financial report. Financial report, my dear uh, students, is basically the one which is more or less related with, once again, I need to give you a scenario. You want to like mm, buy a car or would say buy an apartment. Now you believe that the amount or it's quite expensive and it won't be possible for you to make the ends meet to be able to pay the whole amount, the lump sum amount uh, all together at once to buy that thing or to simply get hold of it, get its ownership. What bank does is it simply gives you the offer that they are going to give you the loan and that loan will simply help you to submit all the installments together, even sometimes the down payment. I, I have a little bit of doubt whether they give you the amount for the down payment as well or not. But for the rest of the installments, they're able to you know, give you the kind of payment which is required. Afterwards, they make a plan. That plan may have a duration of five years or 10 years. But within that plan, it's clearly stated that after a month, what kind of amount is supposed to be submitted to that specific bank in order to uh, simply return back all the loan which has been simply taken by the bank. So the money which you have borrowed or which they have lent to you, now it's time to return it back. But it will be returned back and the way it's more feasible for you. If you are getting a monthly salary of some amount and from that if it's possible to return it back to you, of course, you will accept the offer. And for that purpose, they basically prepare their financial report. So the kind of scheme that they prepare for you that you have to complete that on a monthly basis, you have to return to us 50K, 50,000, I mean, or 60 or 40. It could be any amount, but on a monthly basis, it will be done. And on the basis of which for a period of four to five years, you have to submit that amount on a monthly basis. So this procedure and everything the way it is supposed to be presented to that person who is going to either avail it or reject it is basically presented in the form of a financial report. This is the thing which serves the purpose. And this is basically uh, why a financial report becomes important. Do you see so far like how each and every report is serving the purpose? So the information will be quite short, concrete. Things would be there, will be there on a single page as you will see within the upcoming examples. Point here was to simply mention how things are uh, written concretely, concisely, very clearly and within different forms serving different purposes. Let's move ahead to see the next category which is of feasibility report. Name quite simply or simply tells you everything that how it is like simply supposed to be done. Feasibility is simply all about to have a feedback on whether this method or this mode which has been chosen to carry out and in order to deal with the problem to how much extent it is feasible. So its focus lies on the element of feasibility itself. That's why it's more important. So this is the basic point which I can just uh, share with you to have a good idea what basically feasibility report is all about. If you look at the word itself, what you have to basically do within this report is to talk about the methodology which has been chosen to carry out an experiment and to talk about whether this thing actually is feasible to be applied. So one person was like given or assigned a task by an organization to state that problem, deal with that problem, come up with some solutions. So they have recommended something 
to the higher authorities. Now you are provided with those recommendation to look at their feasibility, whether they are feasible, practicable, applicable or not. So if you're going to provide the kind of report after analyzing all of those, whether it's practicable or not, you're going to write the feasibility report. One point uh, to mention here with respect to the previous category, that is of, of course, the financial report. There is another one which is coming also quite related with that financial report. So that's why there was a little bit of confusion. And that's why I believe that there needs to be a little bit clarification as well before we move ahead so that we may not have any kind of confusion. As both of those reports are basically, and they are written over here as well. I'm referring to this one and this one. Financial report I would like to mention here just to clarify that confusion is more uh, less related with that if you want to see the kind of transactions that you have made the kind of loans that you have taken if you have or if you have made any kind of online transfer to any other bank for that purpose you basically have the financial report so the kind of bank statement that you get is a good example of understanding the financial report the rest of the procedure everything that i told you with respect to the kind of schedule or a complete program that you get uh, from the bank basically for completing of or for submitting all the pending dues for buying that house or for buying that apartment or car the schedule that they make for you to monthly submit a specific amount to the bank that is basically done within this report so uh, there was a little bit confusion but I wanted to clarify it at the very first place so that nothing gets mixed up it's all about financial statements that you basically do so there shouldn't be any kind of confusion and everything should be clear visibility report clear let's move ahead to see the literature review of course this is the one in which you are assigned a task of maybe reading some sort of material and to provide a review of it that if you need to basically provide everything within short form you were provided with the like detailed material and now someone assigns you the task that you need to give me a quick review of what is basically there within that work so for that purpose you basically write a review report that's why it's written that it's a literature review report and if I ask about the last one that will be focusing on the credit report I believe now you can also tell me there was a little bit minor confusion but the point is once again to be mentioned here that this is the one within which you get the detail of any kind of installments or installment plan of which you will become a part the bank is going to share all the details with you but that is the program through which that customer who is basically taking the loan from the bank that is always going to or she is going to return all the installments on monthly basis for, for that big amount that big lump sum which they have borrowed from the bank to buy anything a house or apartment or a car for that purpose they basically give you the credit report nothing should get mixed up it has been clarified to you once again that's the difference between a financial report and a credit report now let's see I don't think there will be any kind of confusion left within your mind because most of the things have been made clear to you sales activity report done by a salesperson he's basically doing all the tasks for you selling things basically and then the rate of selling all that material and to how much extent it has been sold that quantity will be mentioned within that sale activity progress report mostly done within science uh, science projects and it can be a report to a funding agency as well because the funding agency for example if you talk about within our own context if you are getting a scholarship the higher education commission if you are basically a scholarship holder so they ask for a report as well from your university as well to how much extent uh, the individual or the research scholar has progressed to how much extent the work has been completed after all the higher education commission is giving you the grant that indigenous scholarship that you have won and now you are getting the grant for carrying out your study that you see is paying for your dues your fee your books and all the material so they require a detailed report as well that detail which is more 
clear, concrete, concise, and gives everything within a very short length. And they basically specify that you are completing, fulfilling all the deadlines for that purpose. You write the progress report. Personal evaluation report, what's the basic point? It's all about the assessment of the performance, to how much extent you are able to perform well, whether you are actually doing it or not. Financial report, this was the point. As it stuck in my mind that I'm about to mix two things, which is why I just returned back to my senses. And yeah, and I told it to you that it was all about looking into all the financial activities, and the purchasing, the selling, everything. Visibility, one report basically provides solution to the problem. The other is to evaluate all those solutions to solve that problem. So one which evaluates the anticipated and the recommended solution is the feasibility report and the credit report we had a good talk over it even now if i ask you to talk about a credit report i don't think you're going to have any kind of issue to understand what it basically is meant for so information regarding your way of handling debt says everything one line but that doesn't mean that if uh, like if generally a short question is asked with respect to credit report so you simply write the statement and expect that the uh, the teacher is going to give me full five out of five marks over it that i've written exactly the same line just the way it was written within the slide because don't you only think once again you're doing that plagiarism thing which is supposed to be worded so why not write it within your own words this is something which i've been teaching for the last few lectures so why are you going to simply state it directly just the way it has been explained to you over here or it has been written here so there should be a difference and you should basically write the concept when the time comes now if we talk about q is there for you and i'm moving ahead yes these are the things successfully covered and yeah this is the example if you look over it it clearly says that it's a sales activity report where you can simply see that what was the expectation what is the actual amount alongside some of the dates and everything which are the basic requirements of course the focus is on the amount look at the way this is the expected amount this is the ex uh, actual amount there are differences sometimes there is more amount sometimes there is less but the point here is that that is how you basically provide a complete detail of uh, your anticipated and your actual sales activity the way you have done it gross sales your profit everything has been total days worked everything is there one good example just look over it you'll get a good idea how it is basically written how it is basically prepared and documented a good example of a personal evaluation report very beautifully written and quite short as well if you look over it once again some personal information with respect to that employee whose assessment will be done and now how the boss is going to tick few things job knowledge yeah he's going to say excellent productivity yeah it's good work quality yes excellent i'm not ticking for myself basically you can say that i'm taking it for you so that's how they're going to do it enthusiasm okay it's okay cooperation yeah it's quite good attitude sometimes gets poor so that's how they're going to tick mark everything at the end they're going to give you the overall rating and opportunities for development can be mentioned over here as well so there could be a little bit difference as well within the template but the point here is that's how you basically tick mark their performance and additional comments are also provided at the right hand side not to be followed exactly the same way minor differences are there but one example of the way an evaluation report is basically prepared Financial report. Look at the way the overall expenditure uh, are being shared, total expenses per program, everything within numerical form. I like this way because that's how a report is supposed to be prepared. So a good example of a financial report, just look over it. The basic idea is being made clear, which is why it was mentioned here. No need to go into each and every point to understand how it is supposed to be written. The basic purpose was to give you an idea and now you got it from this sample financial report. You want to look over it? You can, but I am about to move ahead because I wish to cover all the points which are supposed to be covered in our today's session. Feasibility report. So 
you have to talk about all the recommendation all the solutions which have been proposed and now you have to comment over it whether to how much extent they are uh, feasible practicable so the heading says it feasibility of maintaining in-house training versus outsourcing so someone would have recommended in-house training the other would have outsourcing so now you have to compare and contrast and come up with your own suggestions or to talk about whether it is actually feasible or not and you're going to do it over here within this section alongside some numerics some facts some abbreviations some headings to make it all accessible and well structured with some good examples as well so a good example of feasibility report also there for you things were covered and explained within the previous uh, points as well within the previous slides as well which is why the samples are serving for all the other aspects literature review quite clear you know you have read one thing and now it was quite detailed you are making it short and giving it review to the person who is asking for the review probably your boss wants you to read the whole book give me a review over it to get all the gist of it for that the review report serves the part which is why I'm going to simply say that it has been tick marked that's how you are supposed to write it all the components being covered here credit report now you can look over it the credit summary is there the mortgage the detail the total number balance available the limit debt credit ratio monthly payment amount like the monthly figure which is expected to be there everything is there the summary of the account activity everything is there example was already shared with you explanation was already provided to you what it is meant for this is just one example to give you an idea basically that what it stands for now if whenever you have to you know uh, buy anything especially if you want to take a loan from the bank so you of course needs to you of course should ask for a credit report as well to get a quick idea of how the method of payment will proceed and for how long you'll be in contract or you'll be bound with that bank to do all the installments or to submit all the payments so for that credit report will serve the part and this is one example of it progress review report if you have to talk about uh, how you are progressing so for that purpose this one is a good example you just look into it all the details are there all the headings are there I believe that enough explanation has already been provided which is why I should move ahead to focus on the other components which brings me to the formal report that detail report as I've already explained to you that it's detail as it involves collection and interpretation of data and it's basically a complex form of report and it's written account of a major project it's quite long and detailed and it can be a review as well as the results of the study so results of any other study and you simply write a report over it so it could be a formal report as well but the point here is if I have to talk about a even if you have to write about a formal report a report which should be long which should be detailed based on a problem and then following the same scientific procedure the way it has been taught to you you focus on each and every section you do the collection and interpretation of data then you provide a conclusion then you come towards suggestion and recommendation and that's how your report gets completed so if we talk about collection and data interpretation complex form of report yeah all the points have been covered I don't think there will be any kind of confusion so if we talk about the basic categories of a formal report it's basically divided in three categories we have the informational category we have the analytical category and lastly we have the recommendation form of this formal report now if we talk about each and every one of them starting from the informational report as the name clearly indicates that it's all about and it focuses on the provision of information that it was don't you think also there within the informal category you will be wondering it will be there within your mind yes quite right that means that you are thinking and which is why these things have been entered in this manner as well to make you think because this thinking is the basic purpose to initiate within your minds yes information is there because if the information is not there that means that you're not even writing a report so information will be there 
The difference is that over there becomes a little bit more concise, more concrete, quite more clear. But in this case, you need to go towards the details. It should be long. It'll, it will not stay within a single organization. It will be traveling. It will go uh, to from like organization to organization. And the purposes will simply indicate that why it is supposed to be in such a good detail. For example, with respect to an ongoing event, if you are being asked to write a report, an informational report, so you have to talk about uh, the status. Every time when I am making a tick, this marker <laughs> does the opposite and makes a cross. But you will get the idea what basically is happening. I have a tick mark it and it simply cross marks it. So uh, the point remains the same that it is uh, basically used to share the status of an ongoing event. If you need to provide the updates for some event, once again, you're going to write the informational report. If you need to share the mechanism of some procedure which is supposed to be followed, for example, for carrying out an experiment for some testing, uh, for that purpose, once again, you are expected to uh, write an informational report. If you remember within my initial lectures, when I was talking about description, explanation, so one purpose, one function, which is performed by this like formal mode of report writing or report writing itself was mechanism. So whenever a mechanism is supposed to be shared, so in what form will it be shared? A formal mode of report writing, which is informational. So for that, mechanism will be achieved as well. If you have to share the results, which is after all the information as well, informational report, the focus basically remains on the outcomes because outcome will be shared on in the form of an information. So the focus in this report or in this type of formal report is on the outcome. So outcomes should be based as well. It's an outcome based report, OBR. So this is supposed to be there within your mind. The OBR which I have just mentioned, I hope that you may not remember. Uh, in case of the informational report, outcomes should be the focus and should be there within your mind. For example, the kind of report which is basically written on bills, why there is an increase and a rise in the prices of bills of electricity all of a sudden. So if you are writing a report, an informational report, so first of all you need to provide an information that on one hand of course why there is a rise all of a sudden in the bills, is it due to the shortage of electricity, but for that purpose, even if you have to talk about the reasons, first we need to collect the data by mentioning that what is the average rise in the uh, fuel prices or electricity bills and you're going to give some examples as well by collecting the data first and then you'll report it. Report on bills will be provided once you'll be asked to provide an informational report. You'll collect all the bills and then you're going to make an average that this is the average rise in the bill prices of electricity. So status, updates, mechanism, results, outcome, and this is one example that I shared for you. This is the way you write an informational interview report. Of course, in case of interview report, you are the interviewer and you are interviewing someone. In that case, you have the leverage, you have the space of using the first person just the way you can see the letter I over here, but in general, it is always preferred to keep it objective. So you can only avoid the subjectivity by avoiding the use of I. If you are avoiding I, that means you are keeping it neutral, impartial, unbiased, and that is expected within your report, even if it's informational or any other category. But in this case, of course, you have the space of using being the interviewer. Analytical report, the name says it all you are expected to carry out an analysis and analysis of the outcome to draw conclusion focus over here is on the interpretation of what actually happened over here you need to interpret as well and then you can only do the interpretation of uh, the results because what happened is basically after carrying out the analysis so what happened and then you simply interpret it. So interpretation of everything, you went through the process and you got the results. Then you analyze the results on the basis of which you interpret and then you provide the discussion. 
So in this way, you are able to write the analytical report. The focus would be on the analysis and on the results and their interpretation. So results and one example of it is that, for example, why there is a rise in traffic accidents, why they are happening. So you will be focusing. It could be the problem in some traffic signals or lack of awareness of people, people driving without a license. So you'll be coming up with different examples. So, but first it demands from you to collect the data and then thoroughly analyze it in detail. Only then you would be able to come up with some facts and interpretation of what is happening and why is it happening. And on the basis of which you'll be able to focus towards conclusion, meaning leading towards some suggestions. I hope the fingers comes over here. No, over here the ticks are there for you. Analysis of the outcome, interpretation of what actually happened, meaning focusing on the results. One example here for you with respect to the traffic accidents, you were able to explain it and your focus should be that it may lead you towards the suggestion section. One good example here for you to understand all the basic points so that you may not have any kind of trouble. With respect to the recommendation report, this is the third category of course. Over here the point is that you advocate a particular course of action. Quite similar to the one that we studied earlier which is all about like whether it is feasible or not. That was short. Over here you may have to come up with some facts, some detail because it belongs to the long category of report. So whether a particular course of action should be taken or not. Over here you either have to go in favor of it or against it. So for that you write the recommendation report. Presentation of results, supporting recommendation. Uh, this is basically the point which you do as well. So you kind of present the results which either go for the recommendation or against it. So it will be up to you. But over here uh, like the focus is on like supporting thing that orientation is towards as the name also says it that you go for recommending what has been provided to you a particular course of action has been like achieved it has been concluded so you basically emphasize and focus on that these are to be focused on these are the action which should be initiated so it supports a particular course of action Quite similar to the analytical report because you are able to extract all the findings, you interpret them, but one point is that analyzing something is not the same as recommending it. Over there, focus was on, like if you remember even the point, more towards the interpretation of what was actually happening. But on the basis of which, if you get the results and then you recommend and you suggest that this action should be taken to avoid those problems, that means that you will be writing a recommendation report. So, tick, yes, advocating a particular course of action, presenting such results which may support your recommendation, quite similar to an analytical report, but the difference is over there you were just interpreting, over here you are recommending as well. That's how you do it. One good example, you can look into it as well. I want you to come towards the last stage, which is of course the additional form of report just touching them because we are almost up with time you had enough of it as well you have digested all the different types which is why i just want to touch all these narrative report as it simply says that logical sequence used for case studies talking about specialized report meaning the summary of reports regarding some sort of problem one problem on which different reports have deal simply one problem was dealt with in different forms of report and if you read all those reports and provide a summary of it it will be a specialized report and if there is some sort of uh, report on some documenting some accident or some investigation you write an accident report and for a non-chronological report discussion of different aspects regarding a subject or a non-fiction book quite clear so you can look into the detail of these types as well but focus on those major ones because those are the important ones as I have already given their practical significance to you as well. Let's have a brief overview of what you have studied in this lecture. Today we have discussed the different types of report in detail. Let's see how many types of report are there. The two major categories are formal and informal. Informal reports are usually short in length and deal with everyday problems and issues. Its different types are sales activity, credit report, progress report, literature review, 
feasibility report, financial report, and personal evaluation. Formal reports are complex form of report, long and detailed, and is a written account of a major project. Its different categories are informational, analytical, recommendation. There are some additional forms of report that are narrative report, specialized report, accident report, and non-chronological report. And this brings me to the end of our today's session. You got the types as well of the informal and formal. You can apply them, focus on all of them. I'm not saying that if that is informal, that means it won't be used. Every one of the type is used in practical life. So go through them, look for the example. You'll find many good examples here. I collected a few for you. You can look into others as well, which may probably be even better. But with this, I'll conclude the session, bring it to the end. I hope you enjoyed it with some breaks that you took. Of course, I'll be expecting that from you as well because I'll be taking the big break right now and I'll be preparing myself for the next session. But till that time, take good care. I'll see you in the next session. Till that time, Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.